More of this. More water. Hello and welcome, Rachel here, and I've always wanted to make water terrain, but I'm not quite ready to get into the deep water that is modular resin terrain. So this is what I found to be the best compromise. First, we give the glass a quick wipe. Then we brush on our heavy gel gloss medium. Make sure you do this on top of parchment or wax paper so the runoff doesn't stick. Use a large brush and gently push the gel around and use a dabbing motion to encourage wave-like peaks. Now, I am working with glass, but you can probably source large acrylic panels if glass is intimidating. These were really cheap though, since I got them from large picture frames from the dollar store. If you're lucky, you'll find a float frame, which gives you two panes for the price of one. I will say, if you go this route, be extremely delicate with this thin glass. I broke one and cracked one from sheer carelessness. You have been warned. Now this can take anywhere from one to five days to dry completely transparent. Also keep in mind that the more you poke and prod, the more air bubbles you'll have. But honestly, air bubbles are okay. Either way, let it dry at least a day before you go to carve off the acrylic overhang with an X-Acto knife. Note that this step can feel unpleasant when you scrape against the rough edges of the glass. Needless to say, you'll for sure need to replace your blade when you're done with all the shaving. I also recommend wearing pants so as not to leave oily skin impressions on the glass. And that's it for the water effect. Having the waves separate from the color of the water will allow you to use these for clear tropical lakes, a muddy river, or a deep ocean. You can even mix our level 3 water and level 2 by printing your desired watercolor palette and putting the glass on top of that to get all sorts of different effects. Experiment! There is something missing though. Hmm. Hmm. Returning to our modular drawing board, our coast tiles comprise of four different shapes. Henceforth, they shall be dubbed corners, cliffs, curves, and crawls. It was very hard to find a fourth word to complete the alliteration. To cut the corner tiles, we're gonna start with our usual three by three square. What I like most about cutting corners is that you can cut these diagonally in half however you like and get two complete pieces, no waste. I personally have a template that I use with this particular shape for no particular reason. Rachel? Yes, Rachel? Don't lie to the nice people. Water, you get your puns out of here. You know what I mean. It's another RP archive thing, isn't it? Maybe. Okay, okay, fine. The templates for the mountain blocks and the tiles that butt up against the mountain blocks. Anyway. For our cliff pieces, you can use up that foam scrap pile that I know you've been hoarding. Make sure it's long enough for your tiles, trim down to desired length, and then go wibbly-wobbly with whatever cliff shape you want. Some will work better being as flat as possible to be the side of a lake or river, and some will work better jutting out more to round off bends in a river or cap off an island. For the curved pieces, again start with a 3x3 tile. On one side, I've measured in one grid square and then drawn a curve from the opposite corner. To be extra thrifty, you can also draw a cliff piece. The measurement you use doesn't have to be one grid square exactly, just know it will muddy the waters if you don't stick with what you choose for your curve and crawl pieces. Lastly, the crawl pieces are simply three grid squares across by whatever you chose for the curve piece. Mine is one and a quarter inches. Now we're ready for carving. This is generally what we're going for. The goal for most pieces is to carve slopes that slant down toward the water. For our corner pieces, we want to shave down the diagonal shore. Two things, shave up to but not including the corners and straight connecting edges. These need to stay their original height for the modularity to look seamless. Second, out of all my foam carving, I was the most careful with all these coast pieces because the carving can get tricky and there isn't much foam to hold. Technically, yes, it is safer to cut away from your hand. However, I find I have significantly more control cutting towards my hand, but I have many, many years of practice. I never push into the foam beyond where I feel I have control. As soon as I feel like I need to use force, I stop and break the foam chunk off instead. Please, please use your discretion with how you choose to carve and research tips for yourself if you are new to this. 
disclaimer aside, carving the cliff pieces is similar, except of coast, there's less room to slope. I honestly just rounded off some of these pieces, once again leaving the connecting edges pristine. The crawl pieces get a little tricky. I wanted all these pieces to join up in a gradual slope, so I drew my guide and carved, then used that as a template for the next piece. More easily, you could make a paper template and keep using that instead. The middle you can make dip lower, recede more, or bulk out. Doesn't matter as long as the side edges have the templated slope and the back connecting edge is untouched. The curve piece simply combines our carving techniques from the corner piece and our crawl piece. In general, you can really carve a lot, making a concave slope, or carve less to make a convex slope for a more bulging river's edge. You can also carve in ledges for dirt banks, and you can even use some of our rock carving techniques from the forest video. Once you're happy with your assortment, we go to add magnets, cover in our dirt mod podge mixture, dry brush the debris and rocks, and add moss on vertical surfaces, especially to the corners, add tufts, do our first layer of static grass all the way up to the connecting edges and halfway down our crawl pieces, and then our second layer of greener static grass in spots blending into our first layer of grass and all the way up to the shoreline, and then spray with sealant. Please aqua ain't yourself with the step-by-step -step instructions for the dirt and foliage, which can be found in my wilderness video and my forest video. There are, however, two things I changed with the moss. First, for the application, I glued, sprinkled, dripped, salvaged. Secondly, I did the moss before moist static grass because I found I was accumulating grass pieces back into my moss pot. Also, when the moss is dry, it's way sturdier to hold when you then go to do the static grass rather than the other way around. I made all my coast tiles grass, which I think visually makes sense being next to a river, but does add some unique challenges to our modular setup since you'll need to make sure that your square tiles are oriented correctly against them. I actually found it handy that I hadn't finished a couple of pieces, which helped everything connect together. I might experiment with all grass tiles and all dirt tiles in the future. I will also say you don't actually have to make all four of these coast tiles. If you like, you can just make the corners and cliffs and you'll still be able to make rivers, lakes, and even little islands. You can always add the curves and crawls later. I just find using all four pieces gives more visual variety and is very versatile without overcomplicating things. Oh man, I'm gonna be in so much hot water for these last couple of puns. Hey, those are looking pretty good. Thanks, I'm super happy with them. You know what else looks like could go there? What? Roads.